Hello and welcome to VIP Boxing's Bell to Bell podcast. We're on episode 64. Um, as usual, I beg and plead for you to leave us a, a nice review on iTunes, Spotify, and Mo- YouTube, anything. Just say nice things about us and it gets us up the charts. You know me, Steve Lillis. You know John Evans who's with me. You know that. You know them gridiron, whatever it's called, American football helmets behind him. You know he's Ernst Duran poster. You know John even more better than those posters, mate. You know him better than Ernst and Duran. I tell you what, we've got a re- a one of our regular guests this week. Always got something to say. I think we had him on just before Christmas. He kindly come on. And it was only a couple of days after um, Jack Flatley had lost as well. So it weren't the best weekend, but he still come on and did a star turn. Alex Matvienko, thanks for coming on, Alex. Hey, thank you. And um. I um, understand Jack's back, joint top of the bill in Bolton on March 8th, is it? He's got a guy yeah, and a poet, going, isn't he? Yeah, we, we're still going on our core promotions with Steve Wood. Um, you know, we took the big dive into, you know, doing some small haul, and it's our third small haul. So we've got Jack Flatley on it. We've got three of our other lads on it, Greg McGuinness, Irish, Liam Gaynor, and I've got um, a lad having his debut. He's quite exciting, called Marcus Tomlinson as well. He's like a line middle middleweight. So, yeah, it's going to be our third show, this one, with Steve. Yeah, so I guess the, the idea now, look, Jack's still in the title pitch. I'm guessing it's getting him a couple of wins, and then I'm, I'm sure the phone will ring for another decent fight, I'm, I'm guessing. So, yeah, because, I mean, people want to see people like Jack Flatley give it their all. Um, I want him to have a couple more learning bouts. Jack could probably fight for the title tomorrow, but I want to get him this fight. He's got a pretty tough South African lad. Um, and, and then get him hopefully another fight but I'm sure Jack's itching just to get any sort of fight yeah Hey Alex the off, off topic boxing it's just struck me if there's one thing you post about on Twitter maybe more than 80s boxing what's your favourite horror film? Oh oh, that's a tough one I like I like, I like stuff it depends what genre I like um, comedy horror so like Brain Dead or um Night of the Creeps, or I like oh, zombie no, horror, I like Day of the Dead. Um, <laughs> Day of the Dead, yeah. I don't so, know. I... Yeah, I like Day of the Dead with the Viet- with, with the soldiers in it who, who all like served in Vietnam and all you know all the all the soldiers who were in it and above the uh, zombie soldier. So yeah, I'm a bit of a film film guru as well. <laughs> oh mate, I can't watch horror films. I'm still tormented from when I was about eighteen. <laughs> When I watched the first Jaws when it came out, and you yeah, saw Jaws, the you saw the, the, the shark eat the human right at the start, yeah, and you yeah. see the blood to the wall come to the water. <laughs> I'm still haunted by it. I, oh, I can't yeah. I've never been able to have a bath since. I will only shower. <laughs> that's the truth. I refuse to bath because I'm frightened something will come up the plug hole. That's how that's how weak I am as a man. I will only I will refuse to bath. I have to shower every day. Uh, it terrifies me in case something comes out in the bath plug. It terrifies me. <laughs> But anyway, that, that's a secret about me. Lillis is terrified of baths. But um, we've got some. Look, we've got a lot to talk about this week. There's um, stuff still up in the air as we record this over Diddy and White Fury. So we're going to have to touch on it. Uh, I know John wants to talk about it. But f- are you ready, John, for round one? Because Alex yeah, is going to kick us off, to. mate. And Alex wants to talk about Calm Brook, a fight I only saw yesterday. So when I knew the results, so I might leave it to you two and coming at the end. So fire away, Alex. Um, I, I just think it, it, it was some event. The full week was some event leading up to it, and you know I'm, I was enjoying. I like I like the stuff Sky are doing, and uh, you know the stuff with Brendan Ingle drinking Kells sweat. Dominic you know, Ingle, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm yeah, Dom. Sorry, I, I, might, I might even sell Jack Flatley's sweat. See if we can get some money for that, and uh, <laughs> you know just everything. I enjoyed it. Obviously, the fight was probably you know a couple of years too old, as we all know. But wow, what what an atmosphere in there, you know. Um, I know the undercard got hit, a, you know, a little bit here and there regarding Fraser Clark and stuff. But I saw Tasha Jonas move up a few weights, and we've been taking our girl Cindy down sparring. So that was that was a pretty good demolition job, and um, it was just it was it, it got real buzz about boxing. Now boxing's back in February because of the COVID in January, and. Um, it was some event that I felt. I felt it was a good event. It's got its pros and cons. Yeah, I, I, I loved it, you know. We were looking forward to it for weeks and weeks, weren't we? We couldn't wait. And do you know what? When the fight started, Amir didn't have it, did he? You know, yeah. he, he, he was as brave as ever. He's, he's too brave, Amir. He always has been. 
but he just he just didn't have it, and it was a bit of a one-sided beating. It was exciting one-sided beating. It was just one of those fights. But as an event, I thought it was great. And we, was, we had Brad Ray on last week, and we said it might not pick up steam until the press conference. But like you just said, Alex, from that point on, when you saw it was actually going to happen, mm. the country got behind it, didn't it? Boxing was big for once, and I thought it was great. And fair play to both, you know. I'm here for certain's lost a step, but we both went out on the shields. We both went down swinging, and and we both put on a, a real show. I thought. Mm. Yeah, from what I was, I saw it delayed. Unfortunately, I was following it on Twitter, and I was working up in Scotland at Sam Kynick show, and it seemed to me just from watching it delayed, I knew everything that would happen. And there was a little bits in the third and fourth round where you really realised how shot Amir was in the sense he'd push it for 10 seconds and you'd think briefly, oh, is he coming back? But he just could never, ever sustain it more than 10, 20 seconds. But you know what? What was even wonderful? They were both men at the end. Um, yeah. You know, Amir, I dare say, is going to retire. Kel, I still wouldn't like to see him at an elite level at middleweight. Him and Eubank may be a good fight, but I want, it, might only take, it might take a Eubank fight. Or would it take any fight for Kel to get up again as much as he did for the other night against Amir? Because that was 18, 20 years of rivalry coming together on one night. Could he get up for a, a big a big fight again, you know, after that? I mean, they even mentioned Conor Ben, didn't they? They're yeah. all about you, Ben, going up, Conor Ben. It's pretty exciting, really. It's give, like you say, Kel that big payday was right at the end, kind of get up for it, but... Um... Now a lot more people know who Kel Brook is, and I think that's what really got him annoyed. It, it was a bit like the Hagler and Leonard, wasn't it? Where Hagler <laughs> was always annoyed, and that's how I felt with Kelly. Was so emotional, but I think a lot of people he's won a lot of fans from it. I, I think hopefully you know he'll get another big fight and be exciting. John's getting angry. He's rang that bell twice there, Alex. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, round two. Um, I tell you what did upset me the weekend at that that bill, and it upset me on Friday. And so I'm not being a wise after the event. I contacted John straight away. Jake Darnell um, being allowed to fight Fraser Clark. Look, I know it was short notice, but the board should not have allowed that. Sky should not have allowed that. Boxer should not have allowed that. I think Kevin Marie shouldn't have put him in. I, I think it was fucking horrific. And I people tell me Adam Smith and promoters and Sky and the box of people caring for fighters' welfare. They didn't care for this guy's welfare. That guy lost to Darren Coville, a pro middleweight from the 2000s who won about eight out of 40 fights two years ago. Darren was nearly 50. You know, he's been knocked, you know, been stopped from shots on the, the white collar circuit. Mark Potter did him. That was not nice putting him in there the other night against a guy who's been fighting at international level non-stop since 2016. I thought it was fucking horrific and wrong of everyone involved in that. So the next time Sky and Adam Smith go on about these are great characters, we care for them, I'm not having it. No one cared for that kid's welfare the other night. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure what happened with the matching, but you are. there are levels in boxing and obviously Fraser Clark's a really big level. And the problem you've got is there's not many heavyweights to probably test him. You know, he, he might have to do a Floyd Patterson where he went in with Pete Rep Well, Pete went in on his well, debut. Yeah, well, Joe Joyce did it. Look how Joe Joyce, Ian Lewis yeah. on his debut. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, was I, was with, uh, yeah. I saw Cal Greaves on Saturday morning and I asked him about this. Uh, and they had a, Pol a good Polish guy lined up. I think he was six wins and a draw. But his, his trainer got COVID and then... He sorted a replacement trainer out, and then the fighter got COVID on the Thursday or Friday. So the fight should have just been scrapped. As soon as Jake Darnell was the only possible opponent, I know you'd built up Fraser Clark's debut, but th that was dangerous. And Jake escaped there, didn't he? You know, he, yeah. he got stopped I mean, on his feet. Um, he he was very um, fortunate. That's, imagine if he got badly knocked out, what we'd be oh. talking about today, what that would have done. And Sky gave it, I'm watching it yesterday, Sky gave it such a fucking build up the fight. You just you shouldn't that fight should no, forget it was on pay per view. It shouldn't be happening on a four round leisure centre fight four o'clock in the afternoon that type of fight. And Jake look did look tough. He's the sort of guy who could go on the journeyman circuit against a certain level of opponent. Yeah. Round three over to you, and it's Dillian White, John. Yeah. Now we don't know what Dillian's going to do, do we? I, I, by the time this comes out, I think he'll have made his decision, but. It's coming down black and white, I, I think, and it's going to be very definite. 
his attitude. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we said Dillian's not doing his bit to promote this and it was losing a bit of steam. I've changed my mind on that. If he does actually sign the contract, this has been brilliant promotion. You know, will he, won't he? Everyone's still talking about it. It's coming down to a deadline and then we'll get the big announcement. He's signed and it's on. I think it's been a, a, a little bit of a masterstroke. Intentional or not, I don't know. If he chooses not to sign and chooses to chase the money and go to the zone for, as we said last week, a potential Joshua fight, which we're hearing rumours of, I think it's not a disgrace. You know, he's, he's chased for years for his shot at the heavyweight title, the greatest title in sports. If he wins, he'll get nine million quid. If he turns that down to chase money in non-title fights, I think it's the worst decision I've heard in professional boxing. No respect for the title, no respect for the sport. It'd be a disgrace. I, I'm thinking Dillian's not going to do that. I think he is going to sign it. All this build-ups help promote the fight. And I, I still believe we're going to get this big uh, spring showdown in a stadium. Yeah, you know what, John? We'll see. But you know what? I'll, I'll disagree with you a bit there. I don't think it's done the fight a lot of good in him. Because people are like, it's going to get to the situation. I think I touched on this last week. This is just my opinion where people won't believe it's happening until it does. I spoke to somebody today about it, you know, similar sort of conversation as what we had there. And I said, you know, this is, you know, they said, well, what about in this fight? Because Dylan wants to, wants to piss Aram and Frank Warren about and Fury about if he pulled a moody hand injury and caused a five, six week delay when a lot of money has been spent. I, you know, I don't think this has helped consumer trust this sort of thing. You know, you may be right, John. I mean, what happens if they have a press conference this week or next week and White's not there because he's refusing to publicise it, but he's signed. The big thing in any fight and you sell it, and you know it as a journalist, especially with this fight, is the face-off. Those two, nose-to-nose, -nose, snarling, almost spitting at each other. That is what, that's what I think. That you don't have a face-to-face -face picture of a fight like this. You know, we could have, hey, they could turn up at a press conference and what we've said, you fast forward. But you know, I worry about, I worry about the consumer confidence in this fight. Alex? It's a tough one. I thought I'd probably going along. I know what John's saying. It is building hype, but I don't know. I just think, I think um, it is the biggest title on the planet, isn't it? He should have just ripped his hand off, and it is. It's yeah, all about it. how that's just it. his dream. The heavyweight title of the world is the biggest. It's it's as big as you get, and um, I, I honestly, I'm not understanding. I think there's too much politics in at the moment between Warren and Eddie and the heavyweights. The heavyweights are demanding stuff, even the non, the the guys who ain't even champions are just challengers and. You know, they're not even fighting in title fights and the demands. It's going a bit crazy, to be honest, but I understand what it talks. Round four, back to you, Alex. Why fighters travel? This is an interesting one we're going to hear from you. Oh, I'm not sure. I, I just find it, over the years, we've seen many people leave the UK and um, and travel around to uh, to find better trainers. People are always looking for something better. Maybe it's in relationships or whatever and in boxing we see it in coaching you know people travel the world for better coaches um i think with amir he's had about five or six yeah i find it kind of you know like even with this one he's gone with a guy who, who um his boxer beat amir his boxer beat kel so is that why he's gone with um crawford's trainer but what's his name bob bob, bob mcintyre bob mcintyre yes yeah, so, or um i just bob find Mac, it kind yeah. It's just understanding it. I'm not sure, but I'm presuming that's why he's gone with him, you know, because he's thinking, well, this guy's trained uh, Crawford to beat me, to beat Kel. You know, he's done it a few times of me, and we see it all the time, but do fighters really benefit, you know, leaving and going across the world? Or, I mean, what what's your views on it? You know, I think Khan did go into Freddie Roach. I think he had the, his best years there, but historically... I find a lot of American trainers... I'm a big defender of British boxing. Our trainers are just as good over here. I'm not going to say they're better. I'm not going to say... You know, they're all, there's great trainers over here. There's great trainers in America. But so many of these American trainers, to me, are just what they call guns for hire. They tell you what you want to hear because they see their money at the end of it. Um, I interviewed McIntyre, and I mentioned this on here last week, and he was trying to sell to me 
uh, did it for the BBC website about Amir, how he was turning him back to the Amir of 2010-2011. Straight away, you know it's bollocks because no one could get Amir to the 2010, the 2011. The Amir that beat Medina, no one's going to get him close to that that night, that performance that night where he went, we almost knocked Medina out in the first round and was hanging on for dear life at the end. And I just think, you know what, a lot of guys and their families fall for the bullshit when they go to America. Perhaps perhaps our trainers, perhaps when someone comes to you, you should start blowing smoke up his ass and you'll get a stable full of champions straight away, Alex, without building them. What do you think, John? I wonder, I wonder, if, I wonder if some get flattered, uh, seduced by the sparring people. I was yeah. talking to Hamza Shiraz um, last week. It, before his last fight with Skeet, he was talking about he was sparring Benavidez one day, some other big name the next, another one. I spoke to him uh, yesterday and he's toned it down. He said, no, I'm looking to spar people on my own level or a bit lower now so I can work on things. So maybe the pennies drop with Hamza. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, maybe, maybe really sparring interesting. Spar, but, yeah. Um, yeah, um, round five. Um, juicing, PEDs, whatever you want to say. I'll tell you what, I've got this topic idea from, I know you know him, Martin Theobald. He's a um, based down London way journalist, does the ring talk pod, loads of stuff with Steve Goodwin, a new age boxing pod. I haven't heard that since before Christmas, I think. Re- a good fella, really knows his stuff. And he, he tweeted this fact the other week and from, from UCAD. As of 1st of January 22, the British Boxing Board of Control has 1,124 licensed professional boxing, of which 11 are on the whereabouts program. I find that quite staggering. Now, I'm sure there was a lot more than that a few years ago, because I've heard of boxers getting knock on the door when they've gone on holiday at six in the morning. I mean, why aren't the board and promoters doing more to get fighters on this? It really worries me. We, we turn, you know, we talk about PEDs in America and around the world and fighters who look obviously on them. But I tell you, I don't care what people say. It's a fucking issue in this. It's a big issue in this country as well. There'll be people juicing and so many at it. You know, we all hear names of things that goes on. There's no proof. We can't name them. Otherwise, we'd all get sued for liable and we'd all be living in a cardboard box. But it's a big problem in this country. And not only... You know, that's less than 1% are on this whereabouts program where you, Kevin, where you have to tell them where you are. I find that quite staggering. Not more is being done to get boxers onto that. I never expected 100%, but I would have thought, it was all 40, thought 40 or 50% would have been on it. But that's just my opinion. You, you guys may not think it's an issue here. No, it's dangerous. It's definitely dangerous. And I think we should more should be impl- implemented into it and also more examples made. Because, I mean, in the past when fighters have been caught, you know, some of it's been quite laughable, especially at the high level. Um, you know, they're getting away with murder, some of them. So I think it's it's a serious problem that could, we could, you know, it's we could have fatalities at some point because of it. It is serious and it's getting worse, like you say. I'm sure it's getting worse. Some fighters, you just know, but like you say, you can't say it, in, in, you know, just just say it's them, but I'm, definitely you can see it. Yeah, you, you hear more and more. You, you, you hear, everyone hears rumours and stories. You hear rumours of IV drips after weigh-ins and everything yeah. these days. Um, you can't prove that. No one will ever go on record about it. Otherwise, again, you'd get sued, but that beca- seems to be becoming more and more prevalent and like Alex says, the punishments are a load of shit. Anyway, you yeah. get a six-month slap on the wrist for a fighter at the top of a the game, they'd be out for eight months anyway. So it's doing them absolutely nothing. They're suspended while they'd be out anyway. Um, yeah, it's a big problem, but it'll take a whistleblower to, to bring it all to light. Six and final round. God, but it's flown tonight. Um, I know a fight we're all interested in, something that's very close to John. I know I haven't seen a clip of a little Jack Catchell film he's made that's brilliant. Um, Josh Taylor, Jack Catchell. And tell us about the film as well, John. Oh, the, the film will be out on 32, Ready? It's a good little thing. Um, I, I can't wait for, for this fight, you know, purely because we're, I think we're going to see the best Jack Catterall we've ever seen. Um, it's my opinion, he's the, he's the most under-promoted and poorly promoted fighter we've had in the last 10 years. When Jack came through and he was ripping apart Nathan Bruff and Tom yeah, Stalker and he yeah. was coming through on the small holes and the Coldwell shows, he had it. He had what you needed. He's a great lad. 
He looks the part. He's in a great weight division. He was an exciting, brutal fighter. And he just got left on simmer for way too long. Jack could have been made into a star. Um, that might be the thing that counts against him here. Inactivity, and he's jumping up probably two levels instead of yeah. one. But the raw ability and the, the, the natural strength he's got. People spoke about how strong and powerful Jack was eight or nine years ago. Yeah. I just think we're going to get the best Jack we've ever seen. The occasion won't get to him. He won't shirk it. He won't flinch. He, he, he won't shrink under the occasion. We will get the best Jack. And we're getting to see him against a pound-for-pound pound fighter. You know, Josh, he's right at the top of his game. He's one of the, one of the best, I think. He's, his resume is incomparable to most of the world. You know, we're talking a guy here who's going to be in with Crawford and people like that. And we'd give him a, you know, he wouldn't be a, a rank outsider against Crawford. There'd be people giving him a chance. I just think this is a real top quality British fight for the, the biggest title in Britain. And I think we're going to get something special. I don't think it's going to be as one-sided as people think. You know what? Well, Sorry, go on, Alex. Well, I was going to say, I've had Jack in, in my gym. Even even fought an ABA finalist um, a long time ago in, in the amateurs, and he beat him called uh, Chris Blinkhorn, who was an ABA finalist. He'd moved up in weight, and young Jack with her, I think Jack's first year as a senior, and beat him. And I remember thinking, this kid's strong, and our lad come out and went, he is strong. And ever since, like you said, Nathan Bruff, people like that, he was walking through them. I've had him in my gym sparring. Jack Flatley sparred everyone. He's always said Jack's the hardest hitter. And he's sparred guys who've been in with Golovkin and stuff. Um, and he's clever as well. He sits there, he sets traps. He's not just winging away. Um, he's quite clever and he's got a good team round him. The team's buzzing, yeah. Travis and Jamie. And I think another great weekend of boxing, second week on the trot. Yeah, you know what? One thing they won't be is overwhelmed, as you said, with that crew around them. That's that's them going to Scotland, getting booed is no problem. What? what well, I give Jack all the credit in the world. He could have found much easier options to a world title. He could have insisted on his man in the tree before when he stepped aside. He wanted all four world belts. You know, I, I would have liked to have seen him because of who he's up against and how many more levels he's got to find. I would have liked to have seen him gone and got a WBO and cashed in because it's all about money, this sport. You know, um, I just think the level he's moving up to is someone who is sensational. You know what? If Josh Taylor was English, should we say, you know, the English papers don't write about him. He would be absolutely enormous. He would be mainstream down there. You know, it's almost like Ricky Burns never got credit, you know, south of the board. It's just like in Scotland, they don't write about English things. That's what it is, although it's all Britain. I just think it's the levels Jack is going. I mean, you, you look at Taylor, his CV, it's ridiculous. It compares with anybody in boxing. You know, Ramirez, Progray, Baroncheck, Victor Postel. You know, I think it was Vasquez in fight number 11. Yeah. You know, O'Hara Davis in fight number nine. And that goes on to go back to you the way you say Jack was brought on. Maybe it, you know, it was too study. He fought O'Hara in fight number 23. 24. Well, I'm not sure, but he was, you know, in his 20s. I just think, I, 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 you know I what? I, of course, I, I want Jack to win. I know him well. He's great to me. We see how warm he is on as a person, how game he is, how laugh he is on that thing he's, do, he's done for you, John, that we're going to, everyone will see later in the week. I just think he's gone to a level where we're talking someone who would have a chance against Terence Crawford. Yeah. But, but that, 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 that's it. That, that is why there I, was, I just. There was a win. There was a window for Jack where when he beat when he beat Stalker, he, sh he should have got the big push there. That 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 they had a they had a potential star, and he for whatever reason it just didn't happen, and he's been on simmer. But it, well, if he doesn't, if we don't get the best Jack cat all ever, he's going in three or four rounds, isn't he? We've got to get the best Jack. Yeah. I, I just think it's going to be a, a real good hard fight. A, yeah, Taylor's well, a massive favourite. You know, I, do, I do think we are going to get something closer than people are saying. Oh, we'll see a hard fight, John, because if you look at Taylor's fights, he wins and he looks really good, but he wins hard fights. He makes it hard. He, he, he makes he hard fights. Make hard fight. and he wins it. hard fights. So, yeah, Jack gives him a hard fight. I just think Taylor, you know, he is one of my favourite fighters in the world. And I went on... Um, 
we won't go back. When I went ran over, I think story I repeat on air again. About a year ago, I was doing some bits of Frank Warren, not Frank Warren. Yeah, it was must have been for, yeah, it was Frank Warren when Jack was gonna fight. Um, or oh, forget who it was. It was anyway. He was gonna fight on a Frank one of Frank Warren's cards in Edinburgh, so um, uh, Glasgow. So I went up with to do do the press conference there, do some work at a press conference, and went up with Ben Davison and Jack. Sorry, Ben Davison and Josh Taylor. So we get on the train, you know, we're going up there, this fucking nightmare with the trains. Um, we get to Carlisle. Um, Frank has to pay for a taxi to get us to Carlisle to Glasgow. Press conference starts three hours late. We get another car, take us back to Carlisle. It was when, when Josh was, was Ashton underline training um, at the village, living at the village hotel. So we come back on the train. We had about three hours wait for a train at Carlisle. And we went uh, at a Nando's. And in that three hours, I learned a lot about Josh as a person, the way he was speaking, the way he looks at you. He just loves fucking hurting people and mm -hmm. fighting. He just loves it. And I just thought you were, and from that moment, I was sold on him. I was yeah. sold anyway, but now he's most probably one of my favorite fighters in the world, if not yeah. the my favorite. No, he's proper, isn't he? He's all about it, Taylor. Yeah, if you like boxing, it. You, you you like Josh Taylor, and you got to tune in. This is sad. I mean, you know, I gave Sky some some stick earlier, but when Eddie and when Eddie was at Sky, Sky would not have stumped up the money for this fight unless it was pay per view. So fantastic that they're doing this uh, for subscribers this weekend. Absolutely fantastic fight. Yeah. There's a fight on the undercard that'll be fun. McCarrigan McFarlane and Nick Campbell for the Scottish heavyweight. That'll be fun as the well. Scottish so. heavyweight title. So, Jay, my pal Jay McCarrigan McFarlane, the only man ever in Scottish boxing history to try and win two titles going backwards, heavyweight to cruiserweight or cruiserweight <laughs> to heavyweight. Two time Scottish champ. <laughs> yeah. Right, fellas, anything else to add this week? Do you want to say anything at all, Alex? No, no, I, I like coming on. I enjoyed that, to be honest. Uh, it was good. It, yeah, boxing's vibrant, like you were saying. And I forgot about the big fight this weekend. I just forgot about it today. Well, it's just made me just excited again. We, we were chatting today about our topics. And I, I had to message John and say, John, make sure Taylor Catchell was one of your topics, which I knew it would have, but I guess it would have been anyway. So there's a plenty to talk about. And that went really quick again tonight, fellas. Um, mm. lovely talking to you both. Thanks everyone for listening. As usual, Alex, we'll get you on again in a couple of months' time. John, I'll speak to you next week. Are you going to Scotland, John, this week to see Jack? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going. I'm gonna, I went in last Saturday watching uh Avenesian doing a little bit of sparring in Manchester, and I'm gonna go down and watch it again this weekend. So good, good fun watching that. I'm not even seeing this week's live. I'm roped into doing Pat Barrett's show in Liverpool this Saturday. <laughs> With that, thanks everyone else, everyone who's watched, and thank you two fellas. Thank you, thanks guys. For all boxing, info, news, and latest interviews, Amateur and Pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP, boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.